All right, here we are. I have a question here. And, um, why do tarot cards work? So this is about um, what makes the tarot cards so effective in finding answers to uh, questions we're looking into. Um, and this is a this is a groundbreaking uh, discovery that I came across in um, 2008, I believe it was. That's when I started writing books about this subject. My books are available on Amazon right now. And um, we can explain now why the tarot cards are an effective way of finding answers. They show us things we didn't see before we sat down with the cards. Ideas we didn't have before. They give us answers. And that can now be explained. The biggest mystery of the tarot is how can a deck of cards make predictions? How can they find answers? That's been the biggest this biggest um, thing of the tarot. And, um, and today that can be explained. Today we have psychological terminology to describe the um, application of a tarot card reading. And it could now be looked at as a creative thinking technique. Specifically, a creative thinking technique known as conceptual blending. If we look at what a creative consultant does and how they go about looking at a question, we can see that the, the techniques and the applications of thinking that they use is identical to a card reading. They work exactly the same. Um, First off, it's a universal tendency to fragment a question into separate parts. Whenever you want to look at something, it has to be done that, that has to be done in order to really analyze what you're looking into. This is what a card spread does. A card spread breaks your question into separate parts. Each position is an element of your question to be looked into. And then, some type of a random stimulus is added to those positions to force our mind to think of that element of the question in different ways than we would normally think of it. This, is allows, this allows us to come up with new ideas and to get out of our normal convergent thinking type of, th type of way of thought. It makes us use our imagination. And imagination is the gateway to your intuition, which is why it's effective. So you break a question apart into separate parts, add a random stimulus of some type to each element of the question, forcing our mind to, and, and then making associations between the randomness to that element of the question you're looking into, forces our mind to make comparisons and um, to see how that randomness can help that element of the question in some way that we didn't see before. Today this is commonly known as conceptual blending. A card reading is identical in the, using the same thing. Creative consultants use conceptual blending probably more than any other technique to find new ideas, to solve problems, to find answers. And that means for something still to be done in the future, to make a prediction, the same way a card reader does. The only difference between a, cons a creative consultant or any other creative thinker and a tarot reader is a card reader, the tarot reader, limits their random stimulus to a deck of 78 tarot cards to be placed in elements of a question known as a card spread where a creative consultant will use anything in the world around them to be used as a randomness to be placed in the elements of a question. This explains why the card reading is so effective. If you look into creative thinking and if you look into conceptual blending, conceptual blending is a type of creative thinking. Google conceptual blending or creative thinking. 
if you Google those, you'll start to, you'll see, you'll be, able, you'll be able to connect the dots on how it's exactly like a card reading. And card readings work exactly the same way. This has been the biggest mystery of the tarot. How can a deck of cards do this? Now we know why. Now we can explain why. This is why I started writing books about the subject. And um, I think it's something that will um, break open the, the tarot card reading in ways that we've never even considered before. Again, that's always been the biggest mystery. Pappas wrote in his book, Tarot of the Bohemians, written in 1880s of some, uh, 1889, I think. He wrote, the key to its construction and application has not yet been revealed so far as I know. Now that's right in his preface of the book. Then he went on to write. Uh, then he went on to write a 350-page treatise on the subject, which is kind of hard to do if you don't understand the construction or application of what it is you're writing about. But card readers of all uh, authorities on the cards have always admitted they don't know why they work. Eden Gray, in her classic book uh, *Complete Guide to the Tarot*, written in 1970. She says in her book, in some way that we do not understand, your subconscious mind seems to direct the shuffling, but can do this correctly only after you have implanted the meaning of each card in your memory. In some way that we do not understand. Right off the bat, we, don't, we can't explain why. Once we can explain why something works, it allows us to improve it, it allows us to... Uh, enhance it, make it more proficient, make it more, make it better than it was. Until then, what we've been forced to do is use paint-by-numbers applications with tarot cards. Now that we can understand why this system works, it allows us to really move forward with it. The tarot cards, the mystery of the tarot has never been in the cards themselves. It's been in the application, the way they're used. Breaking a question apart into sections, called the card spread. Break, that's what you're doing. You're breaking a question apart into sections. Each position of that card spread is meant to be associated with meaning to your question. Adding a random stimulus to each one of those positions, known as a tarot card, and making associations between the tarot card and the position it's placed into forces our mind to use our imagination to find ideas that will work with that position from that card. Ideas we didn't think of before. That's called conceptual blending. Anybody who's ever been involved with uh, taking college courses on creative thinking techniques If you explain to them how a card reading worked, they would look at it and say, oh yeah, well, that's exactly what I do. That's what I've learned. Paul Foster Case, uh, one of the most um, involved uh, occult mystics on the tarot, uh, said that the most important use of the tarot is to evoke thought. And I couldn't agree with him more. It does spark ideas. Stuart Kaplan, founder of U.S. Game System, said, said this in 1970, and I quote, It is possible that someday the precise art of spreading and reading tarot cards may again come to light through the chance investigation of an interested individual. Unquote. Now, and that individual is me, because I have um, came across this groundbreaking uh, discovery in 2008 and um, I've been writing ever since about it. So yeah, it might be time for a change in the way we understand this unique and ingenious pack of cards called the tarot. It's a creative thinking technique, breaking your question apart into sections, called the card spread. Adding a random stimulus of some type to those elements of the question called tarot cards. And conceptually blending the tarot card meaning or other impressions that we get from it 
to be associated with that element of the question it's placed with. Conceptual blending. This is why a tarot reading is so effective. Once you understand this, it opens up floodgates of new possibilities with tarot cards that we've never looked at for centuries. So a tarot card reading can now be looked at as a creative thinking technique. Google conceptual blending. And if you look at what you're reading, if you're involved with tarot cards already, you'll see right away and you'll start connecting the dots very easily. And what we're doing is exactly the same thing. So I hope you like this and um, keep throwing cards. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.